So, do you know what kind of wine you want with your dinner? I'll have the same salad, but I'll have that before the lobster. And make that your biggest lobster. Yes, ma'am. And I'll have the same. And a bottle of Pinot Grigio, please. Your best bottle. Did you okay? You did just fine. They serve a nice Pinot Grigio here. Let's have that. Is that what Luis ordered on your date? What if it was, Hank? Sure. Are you thinking about Luis when you're out on a date with me? Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm looking forward to our date. Well, I know we're gonna have a great time tonight. Luis. I haven't seen you hit the bag that hard in years. Why are you so upset? Sparkles with me. Even at night, it was meant to be on my finger forever. <sighs> really? Well, why don't we take a poll here? I wonder if she thinks that that ring is meant to be on your finger forever. Well, maybe I will ask Gwen. I have a strong feeling about this bird that it will cause people pain and suffering, but I'm not sure why. Maybe there's something inside of it. But I don't see how there could be, Timmy. Oh, it's so bloody frustrating. I paid good money for that bird, thinking that it would destroy people's lives, but it's obviously harmless. Or is it? Charity had a strong feeling about it, too. Strange that we should both be wrong. Honey, are you okay? You seem distracted. Oh, TC, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the talk I had with Charity earlier. You know, Grace and Kay are really worried about the premonitions she's been having. Premonitions? What kind? Charity saw pain and heartache ahead for a family that she's close to. <laughs> what, did she say who the unlucky family is? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Charity's upset stems from everything she's been through. Ah, oh, yeah fire losing her mom i tried to reassure her and tell her that nothing's going to happen that's bad to anybody that she knows <laughs> of course not life is good everybody's happy our best friends sam and grace are off on a very romantic second honeymoon i don't see any pain and heartache anywhere I'm sure Sam's noticed my perfume on his pillow by now. He's thinking of me. Wishing I were with him instead of Grace. I smell it too, Sam. It's a scent of jasmine for that arrangement. Sam? What is it? Is something wrong? Yes. There's something wrong. Very wrong.
Teresa, have you lost what is left of your mind? I mean, you show that ring to Gwen, she will totally freak. And then she'll break up with Ethan for good, and he will never, ever speak to you again. Even if Ethan was mad at me, he'd get over it. I'll never lose him, Whitney. Fate has brought me this far, and I know it will take me all the way to the altar. Hey, Teresa, <laughs> Whitney. So has the ring come off yet? No, I'm sorry, Ethan, it, it's still stuck. We have to find a way to get that ring off your finger. Uh, I plan to give it to Gwen tonight at midnight. The start of Valentine's Day? I can't disappoint her again, or... Just t keep trying to get the ring off your finger. Maybe the cold air will help. I'll see you. You know, maybe you should just stick your hand in the snow or something. I just realized that Gwen doesn't have to see me wearing this ring to break up with him. She'll be upset enough when Ethan doesn't give it to her tonight at midnight. Do you know what this means, Whitney? No, Teresa, I, I don't think I want to. If I am wearing Ethan's engagement ring on Valentine's Day, it means I'm his sweetheart. Nothing's wrong, just run a few rounds with the bag to work off some pent-up energy. Helps me relax. Well, time was you'd only hit the bag when you were upset about your father's disappearance or the cranes or, well, if we had a problem in our relationship. No, yeah, well, things are different now. Well, it has been a while since we were a couple. If you still want Luis, make your move now. Tonight, don't let him slip away. Have you eaten, Luis? No, I guess it slipped my mind. Well, good. I thought we could have a quiet indoor picnic and plan the kids' winter carnival. It's been a long time since we had a quiet dinner alone together. Yes, Luis ordered Pinot Grigio when we were here, but I'm more than happy to try another wine. You know, I made a mistake bringing you to the same restaurant Luis took you to. Maybe we should just go someplace else. No, no, Hank, I'm glad that you brought me here. I like the casual, homey feel of the place. Must be a far cry from all the fancy restaurants you went to in your globetrotting days, huh? <laughs> well, it's true. I've been to my share of four-star restaurants, but more often than not, I would look for places like this when I was traveling. Places that were full of local color and people. You know what you just said reminds me of a bistro on the left bank in Paris I used to go to? Chez Nou, they had the best. Beef bourguignon. You know Chez Nou? Mais oui! You know, I doubt there's anybody in this town that you could talk to about out-of-the-way foreign restaurants. I mean, especially not Luis. I mean, he's a great guy, but, you know, he's never been anywhere except if you count the trip he took with you to Santa Fe. Hank, that's not very fair. Luis had to stay in harmony to take care of his family. He's worked very hard his whole life. And even when my brother offered him a deal to fulfill his dream of making detective, he refused. And that takes a very special person to stand up to my family. Finessing Sheridan to break up with Luis before their romance goes any further is vital to protecting the truth about Martin Fitzgerald's disappearance. I know, Father, and I'm sure I pressed all the right buttons when I spoke with Sheridan earlier this evening. You should have seen the guilty look on her face when I suggested she was using Luis for amusement. Eventually, she'd get bored and drop him. And how Luis would end up hating her just like he hates the rest of the cranes. Excellent, Julian. <laughs> for once, you haven't disappointed me. What is it, Sam? What's bothering you? Grace, it's not you, it's... Good. Sam noticed my perfume on his pillow, and it unnerved him. I'm on his mind now, and once Grace passes out, I'll be in his bed. Now that I've made sure that Grace is the only one having dessert, I'll make sure I'm the only one having Sam. <gasps> Tell her what's wrong, Sam. Tell her you never should have married her. But you never stopped loving me. 
nor wanting me. Yeah, it's me. I'm just annoyed that I didn't put on the music that I brought. <laughs> music? Yeah, I want tonight to be like it was on our honeymoon when we danced to our song. Sam, you are a true romantic. You inspire me. You are the reason My heart beats like it does You are the air I breathe the sun shining above You are the dream I've had A million times Oh my <laughs> Little Miss Charity was right These pictures alone could destroy a family with ammo left over <laughs> Who are they off, Tabitha? Oh, Eve Russell Oh, it seems she developed quite the bedside manner before she ever became a doctor. <laughs> That's Dr. Russell? Boy, she was limber. Hey, you forget you ever saw these, Timmy. Hey, you're far too young to be looking at such naughty things. Timmy's old enough to know that Dr. Russell's husband sees those pictures. Dr. Russell would be in big trouble. Well, Eve can't say I didn't warn her. I know what you're hiding. All of it. The secret you've kept from your husband. What you did years ago outside of town. <sighs> Let's go, Timmy. I think it's time that we made a certain gypsy fortune teller's prophecy come true. Come on. Come on! You're right. Luis is one of a kind. But is he your kind of guy? Look, Luis and I had a great time when we were here. Despite my brother's blatant attempt at trying to bribe Luis. Tell me, Hank. Could you be bought by my family? Honestly, um... I'd be tempted, but if it meant turning you against me, I'd tell Brother Julian and Big Daddy Alistair to take a hike. That's very noble. No, not really. I mean, I'm a guy who does what it takes to get what I want. I mean, I've learned to roll with the punches. Luis is just the opposite, you know? He's really serious about everything, and, you know, and sometimes he really gets hurt. I don't know about you, but I've had enough. What? What do you say we skip dessert? I know what we both need right now, and I can't wait to do it with you. Hank, what are you suggesting? Come on, you'll see. Let's go. Did, did you hear what I said about the carnival? <laughs> Look like you're a million miles away. Sorry, Beth. It's been a long day. We used to be so close, Louise. We still are. I always thought we'd end up spending the rest of our lives together. Beth, don't do this. I can't help it. I can't stop thinking about what happened to us. My father disappeared. You know, I was worried about my family. You know I couldn't commit to our future when my family's future was so uncertain. I was patient, Luis. I watched and waited, and I didn't see you date any other women, so I thought maybe... Well, then Sheridan came home to Harmony, and, and I thought you were interested in her until you said that you didn't mind Hank dating her. So I thought we still stood a chance, but well, now I'm not so sure. I'm sorry, Louise, but I can't help asking again. Have you fallen for Sheridan Crane? if it isn't the Russells. Good evening, Tabitha. Are you and your doll out for a night on the town? Oh, yes, TC. Like you and your doll, Eve. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, Charity's feeling better, I hope. I think so. Oh, 
Good. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm here to look for a book on birds. Do you have any interest in birds, Eve? But, honey, you've kept a bird feed in the yard for years. I just wanted the girls to appreciate nature, T.C., that's all. Oh, I find birds fascinating. If only they could talk. Think what secrets they could tell us. Can I, uh, get you some? Oh, yes, a pot of tea would be lovely. Uh, what's the doll having? Oh, nothing for him, thank you. Caffeine keeps him awake. <laughs> where, where were we? Oh, you were going to go and get a book on birds. Oh, oh yes, speaking of birds, uh, have you or TC ever heard the story of the mythical phoenix? Yes, uh, the bird dies in a fire only to rise from its own ashes to live again. Oh, yes. Uh, speaking of fires, I remember recently reading that there was one here in Harmony, I in an apartment. Yes, you? that apartment belonged to one of Eve's patients. <gasps> how terrible. Do they know how the fire started? Well, actually, the fire department is investigating the cause of the fire. Maybe your patient had a bird that will rise from the ashes of the apartment. <laughs> Orville, I doubt it. What do you think, Eve? Oh, oh honey. What's wrong? Uh, excuse me, TC. I, I just remembered I didn't check on a patient. Excuse me. Oh. Nice to see you again, Coach Russell. You too. Uh, although I do think that Eve should uh, switch to decaf. <laughs> well, I'll go and find my book. Telling Dr. Russell the story of the phoenix bird was mean and evil, Tabitha. Why, thank you, Timmy. <laughs> yes, we've certainly got things off to a flying start. <laughs> my heart beats like it does. You are the air I breathe, the sun shining above. <sighs> oh, I can't bear this. We should have passed out by now. I should be in Sam's arms, not her. <sighs> Why is it so quiet all of a sudden? Oh, if Sam's making love to Grace, I will die. Julian was right. I can't go on like this. Oh, I need a man to make love to me. I need Sam. I need him tonight. I'll be honest with you, Beth. I don't know what's going on between me and Sheridan. We've really only had one date. But you've spent a lot of time together. The trip to Santa Fe, her hours here at the center. If she asked you for a commitment, would you give her Look, one? Look, first off, I doubt Sheridan's even looking for a commitment, okay? But, but if she was, would you give her one? Look, I don't think that I'm ready to commit to Sheridan or anyone else. I see. I don't know where things are headed. You know, I really don't know my own feelings, much less Sheridan's, okay? Well, I've waited this long. All right, one thing's for certain. If I find out that the Cranes had something to do with my father's disappearance, and I think they did, then I will go head to head with those people. Even if you and Sheridan were dating? Yeah, and that would end any relationship that Sheridan and I had going. skating was the thing you couldn't wait to do with me? Yep. I got tired of talking about Luis on our dates, so I figured some outdoor fun would do us both some good. That is a great idea, Hank. I take it you know how to skate? It's been a while, but I'm game. I'm great. Let's go run some skates. Okay. You know, Teresa, I'm having a really hard time believing that you can't get that ring off your finger. I mean, you had absolutely no trouble whatsoever getting it on. You think I'm thinking of being stuck? Well, have you ever heard of Mind Over Matter? Of course. I do read more than just fashion magazines. So maybe that ring won't come off your finger because unconsciously you don't want it to. 
What, like I willed my finger to swell so it won't come off? That's ridiculous. Not really. My mom says that things like that happen all the time. Our minds do all sorts of things that we don't even realize. So, Teresa, if you really want it to come off, all you have to do is just concentrate and it will. Okay. I'll try it. I am so excited. It's almost midnight. And that means Sherry, it'll be Valentine's Day. And I just know that Ethan is going to slip a ring on my finger and propose at the stroke of midnight. And you have to see this ring that Ethan is going to give me. <gasps> oh, it is stunning. Oh, I'm so happy for you both. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just so happy I don't have to worry about Teresa being after Ethan anymore. You know, I've been through so much with her. I don't know how much more I could have taken. But as soon as Ethan slips that ring on my finger, it will all have been worth it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Harmony, please? It's Dr. Eve Russell? Yes. Right, a friend of Chief Bennett's. Recently, there was a fire at the apartment of a patient of mine, Orville Perkins. He's just desperate to know if any of his treasured possessions survived. There was a bird statue that, that meant a great deal to him. Do you know if it was found intact? Oh, I see. Oh, could you look? Oh, well, thank you so much. You could call me at the, the book cafe. And please, could you call me as soon as possible? Thank you. Bad news, baby? Hey, you look upset. It's okay. To me, feel sorry for Eve. She's a good doctor. Who heals people? TC learns about her past. Eve won't be able to heal her family or her marriage. First, we destroy the Russells, and then we isolate Charity. <laughs> More champagne? <laughs> I hope this is as good as what the lodge sent up for dinner. I called room service and I asked for the best bubbly. Damn the cost. Sam, mm. <laughs> mm, you're such a wild man tonight. It's been so long since we've been able to let go like this. I love it. You inspire me, Grace. Only you. <laughs> Sam, I could lie here all night with you. Long enough. It's time to reclaim what I so foolishly gave away all those years ago. Okay, Sam. Ready or not, here I come. I feel so sorry for Sheridan. She is such a loser. She's forever getting hurt, only to worry that she's hurt someone else. Thank God you and I both know that to give a damn about anyone gets you nowhere. Is that a maid vacuuming, or are you sucking up? I was merely pointing out how much alike you and I are. Don't add insult to injury, Julian. Try to stay focused for once. We're discussing Sheridan, not your share of my will. Yes, Father. Now, you may think your sister's weak because she's sensitive. I think otherwise. 
Sheridan came home to Harmony to face her deepest fears. She's defied both of us more than once, and unlike you, she has a mind of her own. If we're not careful, Sheridan could become a real problem. That's why we must nip her relationship with Pilar's son in the bud. Speaking of Pilar, I made it very clear to her that it's in Luis's best interest to stay away from Sheridan. And Pilar said she spoke with Luis. He realizes that now. I hope so. We can't risk Luis getting access to the Crane family history. If he learns certain things, it could cause an earthquake that would bury us both alive. We mustn't allow that to happen. God, no. Are you on a date with Kay? Yes, thanks to another mix-up like New Year's Eve. Oh. So your date went well with Louise? Oh, Glenn, it was wonderful. Louise was wonderful. And you were right. My family did try to test hmm. him. They offered him a chance to make detective. And when Louise saw it for the bride that it was, he refused. He passed the test, Glenn. I have never met a man like Louise. Never. He's one of a kind. Are you saying that he's the man for you? I don't know. I wish I did, but... Oh. Julian was right. I mean, Luis isn't the kind of man you can just have a fling with and draw. Mm -hmm. He would take it badly. And it would hurt Pilar as well. Oh, I definitely don't want that. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm going to have to really think. I'm going to have to be sure of my feelings before I go any further with Luis and end up hurting Hank. That's what I would do if I was in their shoes. You are so lucky, Gwen. You know that Ethan is the man for you. Well, if I wasn't sure, I would have broken up with him a long time ago. <laughs> hey. Hey, how's it going? Fine. How about you? Things are great. And after midnight, things will be even better. Well, is it working? Face it, Whitney, this ring was meant to stay on my finger. Blame it on fate. Uh, blame that on fate. Come on, Ethan, don't make me wait any longer. Tell me if you've got something in your pocket for me. Well, if I seem upset, honey, it's because of Orville. I just checked on him, and he's no better. Oh, honey, I'm sorry, because I know you've lost a lot of sleep over this old guy. I'm saying the only one Coach Russell. You know, I'm surprised you all ain't got, like, a, a pill or something you can give over to jumpstart his brain. At least long enough for him to tell me what he knows about my past. I'm afraid it's not that easy, Chad. And Orville's memory lapses frustrate all of us. Especially you. Look, I hope that you find out about your past, and if Orville tells me anything at all, I will tell you first thing, I promise. So that I'll pack up and leave Harmony first thing, right, Dr. Russell? Thought so. Eve is digging her own grave, Tim Tim. One more shovel full of dirt and she'll be done for. Uh-oh. What's Tabitha up to now? I think it's time for a little game of show and tell. Has this turned into a fun night or what? I'm having a great time, Hank. You know, it looks like we've got what you call a relationship cooking. I just hope nobody gets burned, Hank. Relationships can hurt, and I know what the pain feels like, and I would not wish that upon anyone. Well, are, you, are you talking about me or Luis? Because if you're worried about hurting me, forget it. I don't bruise easy. No, but other people do. Admit it, Teresa. Ethan and Gwen definitely look like a couple headed for the altar. Not as long as I have this ring on my finger, Whitney. If Ethan doesn't give Gwen this ring, she'll be heading for the nearest exit. 
Maybe I should speed things along by holding it up so she can accidentally see it. No, Teresa, don't. What's Tabitha going to do? Well, I could just drop the bird into TC's lap and let him discover the envelope with Eve's pictures and papers inside. Or I could anonymously send the envelope to the head of the hospital. <laughs> Eve would be dismissed before you could say Jack Rabbit. To me, it's both the Tabitha's ideas. Is it I care? Just shut up and let me think. What would cause more trouble for Eve and her family? Oh, decisions, decisions. Jimmy wants to know why Tabitha wants to hurt Dr. Russell. What does she ever do to hurt Tabitha? Well, first, she helped save Charity's life after I burned her house down. And second, she ignored Kay's suggestion to have Charity locked in the loony bin for having premonitions. That woman's caused me nothing but trouble. Now it's time to return the favor. Anyway, the more havoc I can wreak, the happier I am. <laughs> Grace ate both desserts, just as I planned. There's no way she won't sleep through the night. Sam is another story. Hmm, if you're not having sweet dreams now, Sam, you will be soon. I promise. Understand, Father, I think that your plan to break up Luis and Sheridan is ingenious, but... When my uh, threats and your bribes didn't work, playing mind games with your sister seemed the way to go. Well, I agree. Sheridan is so sensitive and insecure, the mere thought of hurting someone terrifies her, but... Couple that with Pilar's fear of her precious Luis getting burned by the big bad cranes, and I'd say we're sitting in the catbird seat. For the moment, yes. What's that supposed to mean? If for some unforeseen reason your plan to break up Luis and Sheridan doesn't work, what then? Like his father before him, Luis will have to disappear. Disappear? Disappear? Yes, Julian. Luis has always wanted to know what happened to his father. If he continues to be a threat, Luis will have a chance to experience his father's fate firsthand. By the time I'm done with Martin Fitzgerald's son, Luis will wish he'd never heard the name Crane. This is just like old times, Luis. Just the two of us. Answer my question. I know exactly what he has for me. Ugh. Yes, I'll marry you, Ethan. A thousand times, yes. What am I gonna do? Will I tell Gwen the truth? Do I lie to her? Leave town while I still have a chance? Only Teresa could get that ring off her finger. What 
kind of wedding band do you think would look best with this ring? I definitely see more diamonds. Oh, I definitely see your life passing before your eyes if Gwen sees you wearing her ring. Well, I'm gonna go get some chestnuts. Do you want any? No, thanks. Okay, well, don't wait for me. I'll catch up. Okay. All right. I had to get you. Chad, when you get a minute, can we get two pieces of cake? You got it, Coach. All right. I know what I'm going to do, Timmy. Colin and I can go home. Timmy's missing the monsters. Timmy will be missing his tongue if he doesn't quit with the wisecracks. Sorry, Princess. I've decided not to send the red envelope with its bombshell contents to the hospital. Because if I do, I'll be missing all the fireworks. No, it's better if I have my fun right here and now. Tony's not going to hand the envelope to TV. Of course not, silly. The Russells think I'm a kind but dotty old lady. I'm not going to blow my cover by being openly malevolent. No, it's better that TC discovers the envelope all by himself. And when he does, cover your ears, Tim Tim. There's going to be a major marital explosion. Come to me, Sam. Come back to me. <laughs> <laughs>